Using a store-bought network-attached storage device, also known as a NAS, as a Plex media server has always been something that I told people to avoid. However, due to a large amount of people asking me just exactly how much usage they can get out of a NAS, I decided to do a little bit of testing. Let's face it, even though a store-bought NAS device can be a little more expensive than building your own, having a pre-built unit does have its own advantages. Take for example the optimized power supply that doesn't waste power, or maybe the case that's just big enough to hold the drives and a small controller without wasting any space. The downside, of course, is the complete lack of horsepower. Most NAS devices run on a bare minimum CPU spec just to get the job done. Although higher powered devices are available, they usually come at a much higher cost. So today, I decided to test a mid-range Synology NAS. Averaging at a price around $500, the disk station DS416 holds four hard drives and has a dual-core 1.4 GHz processor with one gigabyte of RAM. With eight terabyte hard drives, the maximum capacity comes in at 32 terabytes, depending, of course, on what type of RAID setup you choose. A huge shout out goes out to Synology for letting me borrow the DS416 for my test. I plan on doing a more in-depth review of this device later on, but for now, let's just focus on one question. How well can a NAS device perform as a Plex media server? Before I answer that, I should tell you that the Plex Media Server software for NAS devices does come with some built-in limitations. Or to be more specific, depending on which NAS device you have, the transcoder could be disabled altogether. That's okay though. What I found that is that with a little bit of planning, you could take full advantage of your NAS without ever needing the transcoder. I know that may sound just a little odd, so let me explain. In my testing, I focused on creating an environment that was going to be limited to in-home use only. That means that the setup would not be geared to watching media while away from home or sharing with friends or family members. This would be the ideal setup for a lot of users as it serves their in-house media needs while still organizing their collection with Plex. To make sure I covered my grounds though, I wanted to get all of my media players inside of my house capable of playing videos. So for this test, I used my Xbox One, Fire TV, Apple iPad, iPhone, and my LG G4 running on Android. For the media, I used a few different movies, varying in bitrate from 10 to 20 megabits per second, all of which were encoded in X264 wrapped in an MKV container. Then, I went to each device's preferences and made sure that the original quality setting was selected while on Wi-Fi. This is an important step because some devices may have a default to limit the bitrate of your playback. And if the bitrate of the file you're trying to play is higher, you will not be able to play it without the use of a transcoder. So now that I have all of my devices configured and Plex is installed, to my NAS, I'm ready to go. Much to my surprise, I was not only able to get every device in my house capable of playing a movie, but I was also able to get them all to work at the same time, and everything but the Fire TV was playing smoothly. After some further testing with lower bitrate movies, I was able to get the Fire TV to play back smoothly as well. I'm not sure if it was choppy because of the Wi-Fi or maybe the Fire TV hardware, but once I optimized the media to a lower bitrate, all five devices played butter smooth. In order to get optimization to work on a NAS, I did have to manually install the beta version of the Plex Media Server. So to get this feature, you will need at least version 9.1.4 or higher. If you're watching this video in the future, it is possible that this version is already available to the public and you already have the option for it. But if you're watching it while the Plex Optimize feature is still in the beta phase, then you will need to manually install it. To do this, head on over to the Plex.tv website and assuming of course you have the Plex Pass, navigate to the Plex Pass download section. Now you will click on the NAS button and select the correct version for your device. For me, I selected the Alpine ARM V7 version. Now get into your disk station manager and navigate to the package manager. Before we attempt to manually install Plex, go to the settings and under general and change the trust level from Synology Inc. to any publisher. Once done, click OK and go back to the package manager screen to find the manual install button. Click that and then find the location of your downloaded Plex package. Then just click next and then apply. After a few moments, your NAS will have installed the new Plex Media Server version and you will now have the ability to use the brand new optimized feature. Now I've already made a video that you can watch here on how to optimize your media. So for this video, I will just say, try to find a suitable format for the device in your house that's having a problem playing media. For example, 
I went in and selected Android for my Fire TV and changed the quality to 4 megabits per second. This allowed me to not only play media on all four of my other devices, but also on the Fire TV without any stuttering. I could say that it was because of Wi-Fi that I had to do this, but it could also have been the fact that my Fire TV is kind of old and it lacks a lot of power. But since running an Ethernet cable upstairs is not an option, this will have to do for now. Okay, so I was a little surprised that I got everything to work all at the same time, but to be honest, I actually kind of expected it. You see, simply serving a video file to a client without the need of a transcoder does not require a lot of horsepower, and that's exactly what a device like the Synology DS416 is built to do, serve files. In fact, I think the only limitation I could run into would be the limitation of network speeds, or more specifically Wi-Fi. If I've been doing something like having 10 or 15 devices trying to play high bitrate media all on my local Wi-Fi network, then I might end up capping it out. This of course is where wired networking really shines. So in the end, a pre-built NAS has proven itself to be a viable solution for in-home entertainment. With the correct video formats and bit rates, you can play media on a large number of devices simultaneously without experiencing any stuttering. With enough planning, you can even prepare your server to push media to clients outside your network. You would just have to focus on what bit rate matches the situation best. I should also note here that almost every client did need to do audio transcoding, but the DS416 was not only able to, but it was capable of handling those without a problem. I plan on doing a couple more videos surrounding the Synology NAS in everyday usages. I might even look into getting my hands on a more powerful version that would allow the transcoder to be enabled so I can test that as well. Make sure to like and subscribe below so you don't miss any of those future videos. If you have any questions for me though, or if you have anything that you want me to test, you could tweet me at underscore bite my bits. Thank you for watching and have a good day.